Hey fellow YouTubers, this is Lulz here and I hope you had a fantastic Christmas and a fantastic new year. I was planning on uploading something over the festive period, but I didn't. Today is a very special, very sad day as it is the six, six, sixth anniversary of David Bowie's passing. And while we once thought we might not have any new music from him ever again, they just had to go and prove us wrong, didn't they? This is a cracking album. Um, some fantastic songs on here. Some favorites of mine, um, Karma Man, Conversation Piece, which I listened to extensively before this even came out. Um, what else have we got? Baby Loves That Way, cracking song. Second time I've said cracking within the span of 30 seconds. And Toy, Your Turn to Drive. Um, brilliant, brilliant little album. Very welcome inclusion to the Brilliant Adventures box set. But for some reason, they thought they would just go ahead and release this as a box set, its own little standalone box set, which came out a few days ago. I didn't buy it. Let me just say that straight away. I didn't buy it. I've just listened to it on my computer. I'm glad I didn't buy it, to be honest. It pains me to say this, but it's a bit of a cash crap. So I'm just looking at the track list here. Obviously we have, it comes with the toy album on 10 inch vinyl. Um, to give you an idea of, uh, uh, let me get this out, what a 10 inch record is like. Here is a 10 inch record in a 12 inch sleeve. This is, um, when did this come out? Was it 2014? What does it say on here? Yes, 2014. Um, Tis a pity she was a whore. Sue or a season or um or in a season of crime. Ten inch record, isn't it cute? Um stylized to look like an older record. Um and yeah. Which is a ten inch record. Plays at 33 and a third RPM, I think. Uh no, 45. Plays at 45. Does this one play at 45? I, I just got it up on Amazon to see if anyone said whether or not it's 45 RPM or not. The first bloody review. Shameless cash grab from Keith. Keith Jackson. Okay, it does say on the Amazon listing it is 33 and a third RPM. Um, obviously, when, when you're playing at a higher speed, um, I think, anyway, you get like increased fidelity. The, the highs are a little higher. And in general, you know, you know, it's just everyone's a bit happier when you're when you're listening to something at 45 RPM. But for some reason, they decided they wanted to make this box set 10 inch. I can't open this sleeve. They wanted to make this 10 inch records yeah. as opposed to 12 inch records. Why? I don't know. Um, from what? I've read online, it doesn't actually come with a booklet that explains anything. But I'm not sure about that. I mean, I haven't I haven't got it here to actually, you know, see for myself. Before I complain about the box set too much, I want to talk about just what a great album this is. Um, I, I mentioned this in my unboxing of um, Brilliant Adventure, but I am not too familiar with this album. Well, I wasn't too familiar with it before, you know, it got its official release. I listened to, you know, one or two songs, a conversation piece, um, and Toy, Your Turn to Drive. Um, really the only two songs I listened to from the album. And I liked them. I thought they were good. And I was excited to be able to, you know, listen to it in its official capacity. Um, I know a lot of people complained about Uncle Floyd not being on here. I personally don't think it was ever intended to be on here. It's really just an earlier version of Slip Away. That's its uh, name on Heaven. It is just an earlier version of Slip Away. I don't know why Bowie would, would have put an earlier version of Slip Away on this album. I think he was just working on material for Heaven at the same time. It, it sounds so different from everything else on here. Um, I guess maybe it sounds kind of similar to Toy, Your Turn to Drive, but 
this this album has a very distinct sound. Very um, I don't want to say plain sound, but it's almost it's very clean for Bowie. Very very clean. And when I compare some versions on this, like ones that I'm intimately familiar with, like Conversation Piece, I listen to, you know, the the bootleg leaked version, whatever, that came out, and I compare it to the version on this, and it's such a completely different experience. And obviously, it's all going to be down to you know personal taste and stuff. This is all completely subjective. The version of Conversation Piece on here kind of feels more like. This is, this is gonna sound very abstract. I do apologize. It, it almost sounds like the music is happening all around you. You're kind of a character. Well, not a character. You're an observer in this story. Bowie is like Bowie's like above you in in, in this like musical landscape. The music is all around you. Bowie is above you, and he's painting a picture right in front of you. It is a incredible experience and it's one that the leaked version doesn't replicate but the the leaked version has much more intimate sound like you are one with the music which one you prefer obviously down to your personal tastes i'm going for this experience it is phenomenal it's phenomenal english in terms of you know like you know dynamics and stuff like that i mean really par for the course it's not you know i mean black star probably my all-time most favorite David Bowie album. You know, whether you like it or not, one thing I think we could probably all agree on is that it is very heavily compressed. When you um when you like you know measure the loudness of it, I think Black Star is like minus 9, minus 8, um which is quite high for a Bowie song. I think so anyway. Um, this isn't to that, it is not that extreme. It doesn't go that far. It doesn't go as far as Black Star. Um, it does sound modern, though. It doesn't sound like, you know, something released in 2001. It, it sounds like something released today, which makes sense. It was, you know, mixed and, well, kind of mixed and uh, mastered. Um, well, not this year, now, but, you know, very, very recently. All in all, it is a fantastic release. I feel privileged to be able to hold this record right now, you know, in my hands, because not everyone can. Not everyone, you know, can or afford the um, uh, Brilliant Adventure box set. Not everyone wants it. Uh, I got a comment from a fella the other day saying, you know, if you own all the records, what's the reason to buy it? Really, the only reason is, you know, recall, recall free, which I actually have down here. Um, the, the, the live album, if you're interested in that, and this. But you know, if you really, really, really want this, well, they got you covered. They got the box set. You know, the box set, you know, it's like, you know, 100 pounds-ish, give or take, you know, get it for 100 if you know where to look. Um, you, you, you don't only, you don't only get this, you don't only get this, you get this, times free. You get three of them. You get, you get this, you get this, but, you know, alternative mixes which I'm going to symbolize by turning it upside down. And you, you get this, but unplugged, which I'm going to symbolize by putting it flat. Because because I'm not that, not that keen on it. It fell a bit flat. Some of the unplugged versions, I'm just going to call them the acoustic versions. Some of the acoustic versions are... Some, some of them are good. Some of them are very, very good. Um, toy comes to mind as being a particular toy your turn to drive as a particularly good acoustic version ones like conversation piece it's like they just took the song and took the drums and bass away and they were like hey we have an acoustic version and it doesn't do anything for me a lot of the songs they don't sound right when those elements are taken away because they weren't they weren't recorded and produced to be acoustic tracks. Um, Bowie's vocals have a lot of processing on them, which makes sense, you know, for what they were intended to be. But when you strip it all back, it doesn't work. You got like all these great grand effects on Bowie's voice and, you know, various other instruments. And then you got no, no drums to like, you know, push it forward. You haven't got the bass to give it that energy. And you got like these acoustic guitars and the, acoustic, the playing on the acoustic guitars is phenomenal. Said it right this time. Really, really good. Can't fault it. It just doesn't work. 
we also have the alternative mixes, symbolized by being upside down because it's different. Some of them, I couldn't tell the difference by, you know, just kind of, you know, listen to one version of the song, listen to the alternative mix of the song, and, you know, maybe I hear a little bit of a difference here and there, like, oh, is the bass a little bit more present? I'm not quite sure. You know, I kind of had to load them into Ableton and just kind of, you know, switch between them and be like, okay, okay, that's, that, that is actually quite different there. And, you know, in that scenario, it's a little bit disappointing that, you know, I had to do that to, you know, kind of figure out the differences. Other songs, again, going back to Toy, Your Turn to Drive. The alternative mix is incredible. It is so good. I had to listen to it, you know, a fair few times because I enjoyed it so much. It's so different from the version that's on here. And the, re the only reason I can think of, because as far as I can tell, they haven't like really just, you know, really given great justification for why they've like released all these different versions. Um, I think this is as Bowie originally envisioned the album. And the alternative versions are as the mixing engineer envisioned the album, which is cool. I really like having that different perspective. What I don't think is so cool is the fact it was released as its own box set. I think the unplugged versions, the acoustic versions, just, I, I personally don't see much reason for them to exist. They are, at the end of the day, stripped back versions with acoustic guitar added to them. Yeah, they're cool. They're, they're good to listen to, a bit of a novelty, but I, I could take it or leave it. I'm not too fussed. The alternative versions should have been, they should have been in the box set. Like, you know how on previous uh, David Bowie era box sets, we had, you know, multiple versions of the same album. You know, we had Lodger, the original mixes, and then we had the new Tony Visconti mixes. I think it was the new Tony Visconti mixes, which is really cool, because I don't think either Bowie or Visconti were ever, you know, fully happy with the way Lodger was, you know, mixed and produced. So it kind of gave, well, Visconti, it gave him the uh, opportunity to go back and reinterpret, reinterpret it as he wanted it to be. And, you know, they gave us both perspectives on that. And they had the opportunity to do the same thing with this. But nope, you know, they had to give us this and then they had to throw, they had to throw this in. I, I listened to like, I think the first record on this and I was like, it's just, it's just a live album. I'm not a fan of live albums. Just, they don't really do it for me. I like, you know, the intricacies and, you know, the subtleties of a studio album where that you can listen to it every, you know, you can listen to it over and over again, and every time you might spot something you're different you didn't notice before. So, I mean, live albums just aren't for me. We had a box set, The Brilliant Live Adventures. Should have been in there. And the alternative mixes should have taken this place. And this is free bloody records. They could have given us the, um, the unplugged mixes as well. They could have given us free perspectives in the box set. Though really, I think, you know, obviously get toy, get um, the alternative mixes, and then, you know, maybe expand recoil, recoil? <laughs> recoil in fear. Expand recall, add an extra album, even though it's already bloody massive. Um, but you know, expand it. Put, if you really, really have to give me those acoustic versions, put them on here. That would be cool. And then you'd have to sell another box set, but then obviously they wouldn't get as much money. At the end of the day, I'm very happy that I have this album. And I'm happy enough not owning the box set. It, it just doesn't do it for me. I, I was, you know, excited at first to listen to all these different versions. I thought they were gonna be very profoundly different. Um, horribly mistaken there. But if you are, you know, a diehard, hardcore, David Bowie fan and you have to own everything, then the box set is there and I sincerely hope you enjoy it. But if not, and you know, like me, you got the brilliant adventure box set, you're really not missing out. You're gonna be more than happy with just this. And if you didn't get the box set, well, I, I think 
that eventually I have read online on you know some forums and stuff I don't think I've read anything official but I'm pretty certain that this is going to eventually you know I didn't realize just stroking <laughs> Bowie's face this is gonna eventually um, come out so you could just buy just the album and I am waiting for the day for that to happen so the fans don't have to buy this shameless cash grab and that is it for this video. I haven't had Lottie in this video. Uh, I promise you, she is here. She's right there, and she is asleep. You know, I kind of wanted to show her on video, but like, you know, she's so she's so peaceful. Um, maybe I won't feel as bad as like if I like lure her out with something. Um, I don't want to use a cable, or maybe I can just like use my watch and just kind of. No, she is in a deep sleep. Um, I don't want to wake her up. <laughs> but I know like, you know, on my last video, people were commenting more cat and this video has no cat and there's a cat right there, which I, I should put my watch back on. Yeah, if I get up to like turn the camera, then she's just going to like wake up anyway. Or is she? No, she's still asleep. She's still asleep. I'm gonna try to be very, very subtle. Very subtle. And just rotate the camera. There she is. Um, let's, uh, can we focus on that? Can we focus on Lai? Uh, I, I, I don't know if she's in focus. Uh, hard to tell uh oh there you go i think she's in focus kind of really um hard to do she, you know, she, she's asleep she's having a dream i don't, I don't want to disturb her but you get to see her and hopefully that'll make you guys happy and it would make me really happy if you would like the video if you liked it if you didn't like it then you know feel free to dislike it uh, i won't hold it against you um if you want me to do more videos like this then let me know by subscribing and maybe commenting below that would be great thank you